I wish we could have done two more weeks of, uh, you know, prep for the big game, but we are here. We're going to break it to you. We're going to break it down. Let's go. Woodward that, Knights, baby. That's right. And in the TD booth, our technical director, Mr. KG. You know it. Cook, 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 Kenny. What up, though? Let's rock. So, guys, just generally, generally, how we feeling after this game? You know what? I think the word that Jared Goff used was devastated. It's, 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 it's devastating, man. It really is because of how good we know this team was. We know that their being up in that game, it wasn't a fluke. We know they deserve to be there in that moment. And when you lose something like that, man, I think the most appropriate word is devastated. Yeah, it is. It is. It's it's. It was a crushing loss. And I, I know. So so here's what we're going to do. We're taking this full this full two hours to talk about this game. Uh, at the end, we're going to take phone calls. And then we're going to finish off the full with a little bit of optimism. Just, hey, how is this team looking for the future? We're not going to go into too much detail. I want to celebrate or at least talk about this game and, and honor the players on this team before we start talking replacements, before we start talking free agency and draft. We're going to review this game. We're going to be critical of players, of coaches. Um, we're going to break it down, see what happened. How how did they let the San Francisco 49ers <sighs> run off 27 unanswered and make, I think it was the biggest comeback in NFC Championship history. Jeez, yeah. uh, that's tough. That's tough. So we're going to run through that. We're going to talk generally here in the first second. We're going to talk that first half coming up right after this. So there will be some optimism. We're going to be talking some of those. Po that first half was exceptional. They played so good. Until the second half, which we're going to talk about, 845. We're going to start Goodness, breaking down man. some of the mistakes, missed opportunities, coaching decisions, uh, all of it. All of it. Then we're just going to get it. We're going to hear from the people. We're going to talk to you guys on the phone. Get your general sense. This, to me, I'm putting in our 24-hour limit. You can still vent. You can still let it all out. You can be negative if you want. Yeah, I personally don't want to see the SOL stuff. But, hey, if that's how you feel, let it fly. It's the safe man of the people. That's what we're, that's what we're doing, baby. Yeah. That's what, what say, we're doing. Kenny? No, I say it's a safe space yeah. for, for all of our uh, fans in the chat. Yeah. It is. It is. You guys know in the chat. I, I want everyone to be able to voice their opinions, positive or, or negative, and not not let any not feel intimidated to do so. Not feel like you're going to be in the wrong. We want to have a debate. We want to have an argument, a conversation, and at the end, we want to hug it out. We yeah. want we want to just end on a positive note. This is sports media, man. We all have different opinions, so let's air them out. Let's air them out before we get into this. General thoughts from you two guys in the booth. We'll start with you, Nick. Just high, high arching feeling. He said, Kool Aid says devastated. Is, is that accurate for you? I think uh, I was uh, one of these last night. What the <laughs> fuck? When they, were, when they were going off, uh, we literally just had an utter meltdown. I feel like everybody knows that they had that game and they just completely choked this game away. I think they were the better team in this game and they just completely choked. That is the feeling I have right now. It is just total disappointment in these players at, at, on the biggest stage with that big lead. They just completely shut down and couldn't get the job done. It's It sucks to say about this team that I care and love so much for and to see it on the national stage to get to the Super Bowl and to see them choke like the way they did. It was just a really tough watch. So, KG, how you feeling? <sighs> I'm like a parent when your kid do some wild shit, man. Like... I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah. um, man, I, it's, it, we had it, man. And it's, it's tough because you, you cannot lose a 17-point lead in an NFC championship game. I felt there was things in this game that, that could have, you know, helped our cause a lot. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can point. Uh, people aren't wrong depending on whatever they choose, but and you know we'll get into it. But, yeah, just disappointment, man. I'm, I'm proud of my guys still. I, I don't want to, you know, be lost on that. They had a great season, uh, a magical season, really, when you, when you think about it. But it just sucks that it ended in this way when you saw that they were clearly uh, the better team in, in this one to me. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, so that's I, I've been talking yeah. all week that this team is not going to go to San Francisco or Santa Clara and be bullied by the 49ers. <laughs> and in that first half, they were anything but being bullied. They were the bullies. They yeah. went in there and started on offense and just completely asserted their force. And, and that was that was so uplifting, uh, even before seeing how the rest of the first half played out. It was like, man, they're ready for this moment. Obviously, mistakes happen, but, but Kool-Aid, what was your feeling – We'll call it after the first quarter. You see this offense just driving, putting points on the board, touchdowns on the board. Yeah. 
Do you expect that? Were you a little, were you uplifted at that moment? I expected that, but on the reverse side, I knew we were also playing the San Francisco 49ers who a week before found themselves in a similar position, not as down as much, but found themselves in a similar position and they came back in at halftime. My general feeling was like, what are we watching right now? Like I was proud of our Lions, but it was like, you know what? You got to keep the foot on the pedal. The gas yes. has to be pressed all the way down to the floor in every single facet of the game from special teams to offense to defense. And honestly, to the mental part of yes. it too. And that's where I think things kind of got a little out of sorts because the Lions that we saw in the second half of that game is not the Detroit Lions that we know. That that's 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 just plain to see. Yeah. That. All season, even though they've had some struggles in the second half, particularly in those third quarters, they've still been a resilient team. They've still been able to go out there in those fourth quarters and lock down these games and come back and find a way to get these get these wins. I'm still uh, saying I only have four losses this year. They won 21-20. They did that against the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, yeah. Asterix oh, yeah. game right there. But, um, yeah, like I was confident with this game going in. And the first half kind of validated my confidence, not in just who they were this year, but who they're going to be for the future as well. But for right now, this is about what happened against the 49ers and how that felt. Yeah, and the uh, second half was a complete turnaround. It was a, a, the complete opposite of what we saw in the first half. And, and I, I was thinking, as I've had, we've had, you know, about 24 hours to, to let this – uh, let this simmer a little bit. I was thinking, man, how hard it must be in practice to, 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 to practice whatever feeling it must be being up. Uh, what was it? Seven, uh, 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 24 to 10. Uh, how do you mimic that feeling of in the NFC championship game, having such a big lead against such a, such a good team. You, you, you put, Coaches put players in situations. They put this team in, you know, uh, the two-minute drill. Uh, you're down by a couple scores. But there's no way you can reenact whatever that feeling must be, having such a strong start. And sort of what we saw in the second half yep. was was a, a complete letdown. It, it was a choke. It was a collapse. And this doesn't mean I'm, I'm bailing on my guys, but let's just call it what it is. This was the biggest... Biggest comeback in NFC Championship history. There's no, there, there's no other way to look at it. They, they let him down, uh, and, and we're gonna get. And I'm gonna go around to you guys. We're gonna get into more detail about the poor decision making. But I want to know what you guys think or who you might put the blame on. But I'm gonna start with what I think, and, and it might be a little bit different than what most people are thinking. In a way, I blame Dan Campbell, but not for his individual decisions. Not for the field goals, not for the going in on fourth down attempt and not kicking the field goals. Tell me about it, man. I'm interested about this. Now. Yeah, I, I, but I look at the third quarter. That's been their kryptonite all season, hasn't it? They've not yet figured out how to come out of the locker room at halftime and have a great third quarter. That's big facts. I think it might be one or two games they've looked man. okay. But to me, all of that just falls on the head coach. you got to figure out how to get your team ready for a second half. And the fact that he wasn't able to do that all season – I, I put that on him. So I, I basically I'm blaming the head coach because he he deserves responsibility for everything. But I'm not going to be as hard on him for the decisions he's made that I've backed backed him all season. I disagree with a couple of them, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah. But my blame just comes on the general. How do you let this team not be ready for that second half? How have you not improved that over the season? Kool Aid. What are your thoughts on that, or do you have another uh, another point of blame? And it can be different from mine.